four strokes of internal combustion engines. Many people believe they fully understand them but don't realize there's more to it below the surface. Today we will break down the process in detail. If you're somewhat familiar with engines, you know that the four strokes are intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Among car enthusiasts, they're also referred to as suck, squeeze, bang, blow. That's how we roll. To understand them a little better, we need to define a unit of measurement widely used in the automotive industry. The crankshaft angle, or crank angle for short, equals one regular degree and it's used to describe the piston travel position. When the piston is at its highest point, it's called top dead center and it's set to be at zero crank degrees. Similarly, when the piston is at its lowest point, it's called bottom dead center. The four strokes mentioned previously equal one combustion cycle, two engine revolutions, or 720 crank degrees. So let's get started. During the intake stroke, fuel is injected into the intake port. But prior to that, the airflow meter measures the amount of air being pulled by the engine. Then the engine control unit, also known as the ECU, gets this signal and calculates the injector pulse to achieve the optimal air fuel ratio. The stoichiometric air fuel ratio for gasoline is about 14.7, but this depends on ethanol content and other properties as well. This means that for complete combustion, we need 14.7 parts of air for every part of gasoline. However, the best ratio for performance is typically between 12.5 and 13. This is known as lean best torque or LBT. When the intake valve opens, the piston travels down drawing fresh air and fuel into the cylinder, which mixed with the residual combustion gases from the previous cycle. In order to maintain good mixture efficiency at high engine speeds, the valve is opened before top dead center and closes after bottom dead center. Next, on the compression stroke, with both the intake and exhaust valves closed, the piston travels up compressing the cylinder contents above atmospheric conditions. Between 10 and 40 crank degrees before top dead center, the spark plug produces an electrical discharge that triggers combustion. The resulting explosion then pushes down the piston. This burning process usually lasts between 40 to 60 crank degrees. At that point, the cylinder pressure increases above the compression stroke level. Maps in the ECU determine the exact timing when the mixture is ignited. Maps are tables with variables such as engine speed and load in the X and Y axis. Their role is to instruct the engine what to do under those specific conditions. The optimal moment to ignite the mixture is known as MBT. It stands for Maximum Brake Torque Timing or minimum timing for best torque. This timing is a compromise between starting combustion too soon, transferring work to the gases during the compression stroke, and completing combustion too late in the power stroke, lowering peak expansion pressure. When the piston is about two-thirds of the way down on the power stroke, the exhaust valve starts to open. Then during the exhaust stroke, the piston rejects the combustion products out to the exhaust manifold. The timing when the exhaust valve opens is a compromise between keeping good working pressure before bottom dead center and reducing work transfer to the gases after bottom dead center. Since the exhaust valve stays briefly open after top dead center and the intake valve opens shortly before top dead center, there is often a period of overlap. This ensures that both valves are fully open when the piston velocity is at its highest. After the gases exit the cylinder, they are analyzed by an air fuel sensor in the exhaust pipe. The sensor measures their oxygen content and provides feedback to the ECU. This information is used to adjust the injection amount to achieve the desired air fuel ratio. Then the process is repeated over and over again. A lot of newer vehicles are equipped with variable valve timing mechanisms or VVT. This allows for the valve opening and closing time to be dynamic.
depending on the application, it can be used to improve performance, fuel economy, and emissions. There's also variable valve lift, or VVL, which changes the valve opening amount and is mainly used for increasing performance under higher loads. To close things up, there is a very useful chart called Cylinder Pressure Trace that summarizes most of the things that I mentioned in this video. This chart plots cylinder pressure versus piston position. Similarly, the line obtained from a non-firing engine is called Motoring Pressure Trace. It differs in that it has a lower maximum pressure and it peaks at top dead center since there is no expanding explosion. Well, that's the end of this video. If you gained anything valuable from it, make sure to click the like button and subscribe. Thank you and see you in the next one.